in here. I don't actually know yet. <laughs> Are you jealous? Are you jealous of our Key Largo weather? We're on a boat. We have Maria here. Can you see her? I can't even tell. There she is. Mangroves. <laughs> Hi, friends. Welcome. Join us. You're all going to be so jealous because we're on a boat today. Got out on the water. Woo How hot dog. would you say it is today? Nice, crisp 80 degrees. It was 80, 84, 84, 84 on the drive over, yeah. Oh, 84, yeah, that's pretty good. All this sunshine and blue skies. Ooh, beautiful. Love Key Largo. Yeah, we got any people popping in? We do, we have 11 people popping in. Oh, hello, 11 people. Sorry if the screen's a little shaky, you guys. I'm holding the camera, so I try not to twitch too much while I'm out here. <laughs> like we keep saying, we're on a boat, so this is going to be a super fun broadcast coming at you for Citizen Science Week. Stay tuned, we're about to get started here. Got like 20 seconds on my watch. 20 seconds, oh my. 20 seconds before we get going. How's the Ooh. sound quality, folks? Anyone having sound issues? Give us a thumbs up if you can hear it well. Anybody? <laughs> Anne's here. Hi, Anne. Oh, Anne, hi. All right. I think it's about time for us to get going. Shall we? All right, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Instructor Emma. Hello. Hi, my name is Instructor Maria. I'm so glad you guys could join us today. We are kicking off Citizen Science Week today because April is Citizen Science Month. So all week long, we're going to be going live on our Facebook account at 2 p.m. And we're going to be talking about our awesome Citizen Science programs that we do here at Marine Lab. If you don't know what a Citizen Science is, make sure you go and watch Instructor Anna's video that went on our Facebook page earlier today. But it basically just means that when members of the public, anyone, even if you're not a professional scientist, anyone helps us out with getting some data collection. We can all do our part to get some really good science data and help us understand our natural world. So if you want to know more about programs like the one we're talking about today, make sure you stay tuned and tune back in every day at 2 p.m. right here on this site. So Emma, what are we talking about today? You guys are in for a big old treat. Today we are talking about an absolute instructor favorite, seagrass surveys. Woo! Woo! They are super fun and we are going to turn to Maria here, our resident seagrass survey expert, so she can tell us all about everything about them. All right, let's flip that camera over. There she is again. Nice. All right, Maria, where the heck have you dragged me on this boat today? It's a very good question, Emma, though I'm sure everyone would like to be here with us too. We wish you could be but we are in Key Largo, Florida, down in the Florida Keys. Specifically, we are in a body of water called Largo Sound. If Emma wants to kind of show the view a little bit. Ooh, yes, so pretty. Oh, so nice. <laughs> so Largo Sound is right off the shore from our Marine Lab property. So that's definitely pretty cool about it. It's also right near John Penny Camp State Park. And this is the place where we do our seagrass surveys. So it's a pretty important location, a great spot for us to talk about them. And John Pennycape actually gratefully gave us a permit to do all of that awesome science right here on the water. It is only about five or six feet deep here. So if you guys were to peek over the side with us here in the boat, you'd be able to see that it's nice and clear and pretty. Lots of seagrass beds to explore and research. <laughs> Wonderful. All right, so now that we know where we are, what's going on, can you tell me what are seagrass surveys? What does this mean? What are these tools here? Pretty good question. Obviously, as we go through here, guys, if you have questions of your own, definitely uh, put them in the comments there. Emma will read them out. But I think it's a pretty good place to start for us to even describe what they are. They're pretty fun to do. Us instructors really do like doing them. So first of all, you definitely need your snorkel gear. We don't have it today, but seagrass surveys are done in the water. That's probably why they're so fun. And then you need a whole bunch of other tools because it involves using a transect, basically a really long measuring tape, a quadrat like this. And then we have a ruler and of course the ever important data sheet. So we can actually write down all of the cool stuff that we get. So you'll be, if you're doing this, you would be going in the water with your team of seagrass survey buddies. 
first step would be to lay out your transect like this. You'd lay it all the way out to 50 meters, pretty long. And then you and your team would go down and systematically place this quadrat in the seagrasses. For each kind of like data set, you would look in this quadrat and get your information from only the seagrasses in here. So you'd get stuff like what species of seagrass it is, how much of their much of that seagrass there is in here is it a hundred percent chock full or maybe only five percent seagrass and then you would get some other information with your ruler like getting the average height of each lake so there's actually a lot of stuff that goes into this i'm not going to go into too much more detail but like i said it all gets written down here on this underwater paper so if anyone thinks that's super fun to write on underwater paper underwater let us know if you're going to be first on the list to join us for our next survey so exciting. All right, I had to scooch a little closer to you for the audio, but that should be easy enough. That should be better. Let me know, guys, if that's better or worse. Let me know what you want me to do. Um, all right, so now that we know all about where we are and what we're doing, I really want to know when, Maria, when, when, when are you going out and doing these seagrass surveys? Well, so I wish I knew when we were doing the next one, hopefully soon, but typically us instructors get to do these at least four times a year. And then the fair time for us to do it is with our students. And that's really up to you guys. Whenever our students want to do it, we will walk them through the whole process and get them out there. You're telling me students can do this too? That is so cool. So that actually feeds right into the next question that I had. Honestly, my question is who gets to do these seagrass surveys? Obviously the instructors are super, super cool. So we're doing seagrass surveys, but who else, Maria? Who else is doing them? Great question, and it comes right back to the whole concept of citizen science. And the truth is that anyone can do seagrass surveys. That's why they're so cool. When we get our students here, we walk them through everything. So we start out in the classroom, make sure they really understand seagrasses because they are very cool habitats. Then we walk through the whole process on land. It takes a lot of teamwork, so the teams have to get all their hand signals ready, figure out how they're going to juggle all of these tools in the water. And then of course, the best part is when we come out on the boats, hop in the water and go snorkeling. It's honestly such a fun challenge for our students to work together, figure out their snorkel skills, make sure they don't kick up all the water and just get all of this done. It's definitely tricky, but I think everyone always feels super accomplished when they get it done. The tricky parts are definitely the most rewarding, I will say. When it gets harder, you just keep trying, and once you finally achieve your ultimate goal, oh, all the hard work really just makes a lot more sense. It really does. Okay, so that sounds like a lot of work. Don't get me wrong. You guys probably agree with me. It sounds like a lot goes into these seagrass surveys. So tell me why you're even doing this. Why even bother with the surveys? Hmm, I guess that is the question, right? It is a lot of work. And when it's chilly out there sometimes, you know, you really have to remember the why. And the why is because we want to monitor the health of these seagrass beds. So if you've been snorkeling off the shores in Key Largo, first of all, you're very lucky. It's beautiful. But you'll notice that seagrass is everywhere. These habitats are incredibly abundant and very important. So we want to keep it that way. They offer homes for critters. They also really help with that water clarity. So if anyone here loves snorkeling at the coral reef, first of all, let us know. We love the coral reef as well. But if you love that clear blue water out there, you can thank the seagrasses for that. Their roots dig in to the dirt, make sure that no extra dirt gets out there to the reefs and keeps that water nice and clear and pretty. So there's a lot more reasons why we care. If you guys can think of any more, definitely let us know. I'm sure there's some seagrass experts out there as well. But all this information that we collect, we send to one John Pennycamp. We put it in our Marine Lab database and then we send it to Seagrass Watch, which is a global organization. It started back in the 90s out of Australia. Now it's expanded to like 26 different countries and their whole goal is to monitor near shore seagrass beds around the world and just kind of keep track of them, see how they're doing and hopefully get a heads up on any negative events that might be coming so we can protect them better. We have a question from the Facebook group here. Yes, I know. Uh, how do you make sure that the data gathered by citizen scientists is reliable? Ooh, so that is tricky. I guess that um, does depend on how well our citizen scientists like to practice. It definitely takes a little bit of you know learning as you go, but that is why we walk our students through the whole process. That's why we practice. And you know, maybe the first go around might not be quite as accurate, but that's why we go through all those steps. And the more they do it, the more accurate it gets. So we like to oversee it as 
experts, we make sure that you guys are fully equipped and able to get us good information. Awesome. All right, Maria, I got a bonus question for you. Are you ready? I'm so ready. What's your favorite part of these seagrass surveys? I know, think on it, because you got like 4,000 things to choose from, but what's your favorite part? I know, so favorite part, if I had to pick one for today, it's probably the chance to see little surprises as you're going. We've all had that cool time when you're in the middle of your survey, really focused, you look over and there's a little pigeon or shark just hanging out right next to you, or maybe you find a seahorse like this big, floating right next to your boat. I like how it gets you in the environment. While you're doing something good, it's also really fun. What about you, Emma? Do you have a favorite? My favorite part, I think it's got to be the camaraderie because especially with the staff, we go out about four times a year to do like really big robust seagrass surveys and there's one survey that's when it's a little cooler out we do the survey and it's it can be you know tricky like we talked about field work can be super tricky but man when you all get in there together and you're all going through it and you're all helping each other just like having that whole group to come together and work on something to make the world a little better is so fun for me and yes I know I sound like a big old nerd when I say that but this is why I'm at Marine Lab people we do good work a good science and that's why I want to stay here so if you guys have any more questions, uh, post them in the comments below. I'll try and read them while we are out here. Um, I do want to apologize for taking a vertical video really fast. I didn't really think about it. And also I can't alter the phone while it's recording. So sorry about not being super technologically advanced on that one. Let's see. Oh, somebody says last time I did a seagrass survey in Largo Sound with my students, we were harassed by a dolphin. Have you <laughs> ever had an experience like this, Maria? <laughs> So I, my first thought is like, wow, I wish I could. I'm sure it was a little, maybe a little scary, a little annoying, but that sounds like a really cool thing to happen. No, I personally cannot say that I was harassed by a dolphin while doing seagrass surveys. Definitely seen some other fish out there, some little tiny barracuda hovering next to me with their big eye, just like watching, I'm like, what you want? You want to help? <laughs> but that sounds really cool. <laughs> anyone else have cool seagrass survey memories? I feel like there's definitely, everyone has their memorable seagrass survey. Yeah, I know. Dolphins were not on the list for me. I did find the tiniest little uh, nurse shark of my life one time. That was super How fun. How small was he? It was like, hold up your hands. It was like that big. No. That was actually pretty good. It really was about that big. <laughs> She's so good, you guys. Maria is so good. All right, we have another question. What is the hardest thing about seagrass surveys? The hardest thing? The hardest thing. I don't know. Maybe we agree on this, but for me, it's when it's really cold. <laughs> I'm just a huge baby. I think it's because being in Florida for too long, maybe fellow Florida people will understand. But just when you're in the water trying to write sometimes, it's kind of hard when your fingers are frozen. You have to try to write and you're shaking. But we do it all for science. Keeps us going. That's probably the hardest part for me. Emma, do you agree with that? I absolutely fully, fully agree. If you can't feel your fingers, it's kind of hard to write on a data sheet. So that definitely can be the hardest part for me. We're pretty lucky our students tend to come when it's a bit nicer out, like it is right now. If only we could have some of you guys down here right now. It's a glorious day, you can probably see. We got boats zipping back and forth. I don't know if you guys can hear that, so I'm sorry if the audio cuts out on that one, but it can get really tricky, those seagrass surveys. All right. Yeah, it is very hard to take data underwater. Super hard. People don't think about it. You know, we get a lot of students that come. They're like, oh, pshaw, I can write on a piece of paper. And then you put them underwater and nobody can write on a piece of paper underwater. Can I tell you guys? It is very difficult. Very, very yeah. tricky. Really tricky for sure. Hmm. So while we're waiting for some more questions, I'm going to give you guys another question. So I'm hoping that we have a few people who have at least been down to the Keys or at least know some Keys ecosystems. Even Sorry, let me turn this around real fast. Yeah, go for it. Even if it's not from us in Marine Lab, but if anyone's been looking behind us here at these mangroves, does anyone know what species of mangroves these are? Because in addition to our seagrasses, we also really love the mangroves. They're a little underappreciated. So if anyone thinks they know what these are, write it down in the comments. We'll be very impressed for sure. Thoroughly impressed. We tucked into a really nice spot here in Largo Sound, so we're able to get into this nice glassy water that you see right here because those mangroves and the seagrass are doing their amazing, amazing job of protecting us from the wind and the waves coming through. So gotta love, gotta love those mangroves and that seagrass. So nice, so nice. We had a little cormorant hanging out with us. I was trying to convince Emma to catch it for us and he can be our seagrass buddy, but <laughs> alas, we have to leave nature to its own. No harassing the wildlife, Maria. <laughs> I'm kidding, I kid guys. We respect our animals here. All right. So it looks like the questions are slowing down. You guys, we're going to let you go. 
not intended to be a super, super long one today. But Maria, if you have anything you want to uh, tell us. I sure do. First of all, I want to thank you guys just for popping in for a little bit to learn a little bit more about what we're doing here with our students. Maybe you, if you come down to visit and help us with our seagrass surveys. I want to remind you guys, it'd be awesome if you tuned in the rest of the week at 2 p.m. We'll be having little blurbs like this about our other citizen science programs. Tomorrow, we're going to have instructor Megan on talking about marine debris and our microplastics, some other awesome things that we do. Uh, make sure you guys like our Facebook page and follow us over on Instagram and Twitter. Instagram is at Marine Lab Key Largo and our Twitter is at Marine Lab KL. And you guys, you guys can also check out our virtual site if you go to marinelab.org. We have a little pop down tab. We're going to be putting all kinds of cool videos, resources on there so you guys can get a little slice of Key Largo wherever you are. Or well, maybe you're staying inside a little bit more than you'd like. I think that's about it. Emma, you want to sign off anything with that? I do have one last question. I'm sorry to harass you this in the final minutes, but I can't let a question go. I'm a big old oh, nerd. <laughs> okay, so we have a question. Um, we have been doing seagrass surveys for a few years now. What changes, if any, have we observed in our survey sites? Ooh, so that is a really, really good question. And I actually think that you would get the best answer from an awesome infographic that instructor Emma made recently. Hey. So if you go to our Facebook page, we posted it a while back, but it's in our Citizen Science album. So if you go in there, there's a seagrass survey infographic with all the latest information, the data, the trends that we've seen. I think that will give you the best comprehensive picture of what we've been getting with all of our data. That's an excellent point. Go check out our resources. Anything from Marine Lab, we got a lot of stuff for you guys doing a lot of things. I just wanna address a few questions really fast. This water is not drinkable. We are in what's called a brackish area, which means it's a little mixture of salt and fresh water. So there's definitely too much salt out here to be drinking. I know it looks glorious and tempting, but this is swimming water, not drinking water. <laughs> and then big shout out to Chris West and his daughter for joining us. But as future marine scientists, you are going to be enjoying this view one day. I just know it. So with that, check out the educational materials we have. Check us out on social media. And then like Maria said, all this coming week, we've got citizen science videos for you guys so any day at 2 p.m. here on Facebook live we'll be chatting with you about all of the cool stuff we have going on sound good sound good bye, bye.